Besser wird der Wolf von Heinz sein. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good morning. I'm standing in the rostrum without a laptop, so I have to move. Um, terima kasih uh, Tuan Pengurusi uh, Majlis okay. 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 Not off. Okay. Yang berbahagia Profesor Rasid Ma'il uh, Di Malanak Chancellor Academy Um, perform uh, pengarah uh, pusat di pembelajaran di UMS Prof uh, Vincent Pang pengarah kecemerlangan uh, pusat uh, kecemerlangan akademik dan jaminan kualiti uh, ladies and gentlemen um, this is actually a very formal setting to talk about transformative educators So, um, I would like to minta izin daripada Prof so that can we uh, not to be too formal? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Tengok dengan samping with the MC and all kan? Uh. Okay. Actually, I'm very honored and humble uh, for being uh, invited be, for to be here today. Uh, actually, this is my second time to share Uh, about uh, inspiring educators um, about uh, earlier on uh, the first time that I came here um, this year uh, to talk about this was during the uh, AN and uh, sharing of the AN and ACRI so um, when Profong invited me on this uh, uh, Majlis uh, Anugerah E Pembelajaran then definitely I would say yes, yes. Okay. And uh, of course, e-learning is very close to me. Um, although uh, I'm a microbiologist, but it's very important that I want to share with everyone that everybody can do um, using uh, can 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 actually uh, use technology for learning in any discipline, right? I always want to show this slide and. Maybe some of you, or most of you, have seen this slide before um, about how um, educators, or how we were taught. Uh, this is by John Dewey. He said that if we teach our students today the way we taught, we will actually rob them of their future. Okay, rob them of their tomorrow. We rob them of their tomorrow. You see, when when we were Masa I uh, uh, study and in my degree at that time was early 90s. Um, we we don't have PowerPoint. We have only Rostrum and a OHP. Do you know what is OHP? <laughs> right? Masih ada kan di sini? Now we have transparency, right? And colorful highlight uh, pen. Right, so the classroom setting is an auditorium style, right? And then the lecturer will say, "Do not move, do not talk, do not leave the class, right? And and listen and take note, right? So we will, we actually follow every single word that he say, and he will just stand. Sorry, eh? it's a he. He will just stand." in the rostrum, reading word by word, and we will actually, I would, uh, my, my friends, my colleague and I at that time, my friends will actually take note, uh, took all the notes, and we come back again the next day, very loyal to come back. And if you're going to do that with your students, 
now, you will not see them the next day. Right? Because the future is actually now. If you look at this, what will happen to this guy in very near future? Because he said, I'm going to wait for the robot arm. Or, let grown turkey synthesize locally, he asked. And if you, if you um, in now in London, there is actually a restaurant with a uh, 3D printed menu, right? Uh, so you just uh, select and then the, the, all your food will be 3D printed out for you. <laughs> and not for long, okay, you will see the sky tutor YouTube will be just like a history for everyone. So please make use of this right now because not for long it will just be another history like 1960s. Okay, actually, um, today's sharing, I want to focus on the skill sets also. Okay, and the top 10 skill set 2020. You see, from these skill sets, I'm going to map, okay, I'm going to map on the activities that I've done with my students and how we can actually, as an educator, try to de redesign, uh, redesign, um, I like to use the word actually imagineering, okay? We are 21st century educators and we would want to imagine, okay? But we do not just want to imagine, we want to ima imagine and do. That's why the word imagineering is very important, okay? I did not coin the word, you can Google, Imagineering. So one of the skills that I want to highlight is this, sense making. How do you get your students to make sense of whatever that they're learning in the classroom? Do you actually design your learning activities that involve the students to experience to apply the knowledge that they learn in the classroom with their peers, with the society? How do they actually uh, will be able to relate to the real life problems, the real life situation, if they actually cannot make sense of what they're learning? Computational thinking, design mindset okay design mindset now we want the students to be able to make that's why uh, in the department of higher education we have actually allocated some funding that is uh, from a meeting actually that each of the universities will have one makerspace huh? one makerspace um, this one transdisciplinary Okay, very important. So please remember the skill set that I mentioned. Okay, so that you can you will be able to relate on this uh, today sharing virtual collaboration. How do we actually? Just now, uh, I would like to congratulate uh, UMS Profong and all of you uh, for achieving. Profong actually gave me a, the whole list of the achievements just now when we see the montage on the OER on how the uh, blended, lo uh, blended learning uh, uh, achievement that actually increased tremendously and the efforts actually of all the uh, from uh, UMS educators on uh, using e-learning for in teaching and learning um, but I think one of the biggest challenge okay one of the biggest challenges in the uh, online learning is to actually engage, uh, to engage the students in the virtual learning environment. You can have blended learning, you can have, uh, you're using uh, your LMS, um, you're using MOOC, but how do you actually engage them? 
how do you actually attract them students to come to visit to do to interact in that setting in that virtual learning spaces so that for them to learn we want them to actually um, access your course in the, in your LMS like they access Facebook very challenging gun they, they 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 check their Facebook like every minute huh? every minute so it's very uh, I know it's very challenging uh, it's very challenging but I think it's very important that for us to work together to brainstorm this on how we can actually engage and not only engaging we have to actually create a what we call a learning community using pedagogy in the virtual learning environment pedagogy is people pedagogy is Kyutagogy, cybergogy, cosmogogy. Yeah, cosmogogy. Yeah, we're talking to people. Maybe some from Mars, for example. Right. So paragogy is actually peer learning. Huh? peer peer learning. Paragogy or peer go peer gogy. Okay. So, okay. Social intelligence is very also important no? to, de to develop the global citizenship values. Social intelligence is very important. Right. Now, critical thinking and problem solving was at number five and six from 2015 until 2018. If you look at the skill in 2022, World Economic Forum predicted that analytical thinking and innovation will be number one. Analytical thinking. We want them to, our students to be able to analyze uh, and to innovate. And you see number two, active learning and learning strategies. That is for our educators. This is to develop our talent, our future talents. Now, when we talk about future talents, we always talk about the students. For me, in order for you to, do, to inculcate all these talents, to establish, to polish all these talents, to identify the talents, it has to come from the educators. Wiley Education Services 2019 showed that students, they want, they demand for engaging experience, experiences. They want to be involved. They want to speak out their minds. If you're going to have to sit, if you're going to get your student to sit down and listen to you in the lecture and you give your lecture and you want to finish your 99 slides, what kind of experience that you're giving to your students? And how sure are you that, you, that 99 slides, actually I have more than 99 today, how many of you that you're going, uh, that, that actually know that all the 99 slides are being understood or being absorbed how do you know that your students are learning from that 99 slides so the faculty needs new teaching model just like your uh, professor mentioned just now new teaching model program review is not just about tuka topic ini change this topic and add another topic let's do the program review um Less than 30%. 30%. Then submit. Submit to me. Huh? In, in JPT. Right? Although, uh, how to say, this year I think we have rejected many uh, of the uh, uh, programs. Rejected means not totally rejected, we, but we want them to improve. Okay? Uh, we want them to improve. So some of them have came back with new uh, improvements, some of them are still doing it. Meaning that when you actually do curriculum review, it's not about just doing cosmetic review, uh, cosmetic makeup, change here a little bit and change that. But you have to um, sit down and, dis and, and, and really think deeply on how to create an experience, that four-year experience for your students. Now, your student, 
sorry, not your students. When a uh, when a curriculum review is done, uh, usually the lecturers will just work on the course that they are teaching. This is my course. This is the learning outcome. These are the topics that will be covered. These are the references, and they don't actually look at other courses. How many courses in average for 120 credits for a student to 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 take in four years? Boy, then I know I'm not sure I know. Program owner. Program owner is not your dean. It's not your head of the department. It's all of you. It's all of us. We have to take charge of. We have to take charge of our take ownership of our program. This is these are the students that we want to produce. So, what kind of experience that you're going to give them through the programs? But today, of course. Not only the the programs is very important. You can have excellent program, right? But if you're going to still to finish your ninety nine slides by lecture, then the program is just a program. It just will become syllabus, right? So delivery is also very important. And what? challenges in the classroom. They want to be challenged. Okay, they want to be challenged, and of course, at the same time, they need help. In the classroom, and a multidisciplinary approach. I actually do not just want multidisciplinary. I want transdisciplinary, across disciplinary. Right. Horizon Report 2019 showed that short term, the quick win that we can do is redesign learning spaces. Okay. It doesn't have to have. It doesn't have to be a like a smart classroom. Okay, with all the ambience, with uh, sensors, camera all over, it can just be a simple collaborative classroom, so that that setting will give some different perspective of learning with the uh, peers, and of course, blended learning designs. Now, although blended learning, everybody is using blended learning is. Again, very important that I want to emphasize: blended learning is not about just uploading and downloading the uh, uh, notes, but it's about engaging the students in the in your learning management system. Advancing cultures of innovation. Advancing that means now we have to have that instead of the culture of innovation. Okay. Now the ten shifts of the Malaysia ed Education Blueprint. If you look at the ten shift number nine, globalized online learning. Has any of you worked with any of the um, lecturers or educators from outside Malaysia in their assignments with your students? Has any of your students engaged with any of the students besides uh, the local institutions? Huh? Have we can actually? You don't have to actually put it in your curriculum, but it can be in the delivery in designing the assignment, the task. Why? Because we want to. Produce holistic, entrepreneurial, and balanced graduates. But now, kita we actually add one more word to that shift one: holistic, entrepreneurial, balanced, and sejahtera. Not to be translated. Okay, sejahtera to to produce insan sejahtera. Talent excellence. Okay. And we have this uh, innovation ecosystem, global prominence. Okay. Now, framework. This is actually shared pro uh, prosperity uh, vision twenty thirty, launched by the Prime Minister in early October. And if you look at the enablers, this is the eight enablers of the shared prosperity vision twenty thirty. 
This one, education and Tibet. Increase in skill and highly educated workforce, learning society and an outcome-based education. So that is one of the enabler for the shared prosperity uh, vision 2030. For us in higher education, in our institution, what kind of shared prosperity that you can actually, that you can have? In conjunction with this Majlis Anugerah e Pembelajaran, what kind of shared prosperity that you can actually use? What kind of, uh, uh, can you give me an example? How do you actually map whatever that you're doing now to this wawasan kemakmuran bersama shared prosperity vision 2030? As simple as example as shared expertise. Shared of experts through MOOC, for example. Profong, who actually won the Maestro Award, are you sell? Come up with one course, a uh, MOOC course that can be shared through even credit transfer MOOC, for example, right? So these are the uh, um, that we need to to highlight uh, to enlighten all educators. So what we do actually are align. Uh, we are aligning with the MEB, the Ten Chiefs, the Shared Prosperity Vision 2030, and also the Sustainable Development Goal, SDG. 17 Sustainable uh, SDG, and we are actually focusing on the quality education. Okay, just now we were talking about curriculum, okay, and this uh, framework for higher education 4.0 was launched in 2018 and one of it is to focus on the flexible curriculum design delivery and assessment and when we talk about flexible education flexible curriculum design that includes flexible assessment and not just exam based but also what we call alternative assessment in your course okay Total evaluation is how many percentage uh, out of that 100%? How many is how many percentage is uh, final exam? Sorry? 30? 40? 40 to 50? Prof, that's a lot. Maybe we can reduce to 20 to 30. Right? Unless those with the professional, um, professional uh, program standards. Okay? Uh, even if you have 40 to 50 also, that doesn't mean that you have to do exam based. Uh, you, it can be evaluated through project based. Okay? That's what we call alternative assessment. It can be evaluated through e-portfolio, for example. It can be evaluated through projects with community, for example. Right? So, the future ready curriculum framework that involves the lifelong learners, computational thinking, 21st century skill, which actually come out for with the development of the fluid and organic curriculum. Now, how fluid is fluid? How flexible? You see this 21st century pedagogy, hutagogy, paragogy, cybergogy. So when we talk about a program, it's not about just the syllabus. That program can be inter multi convergent transdisciplinary, but it's also about the delivery and also again the assessment. Then you want what what to at the end the students that you want to achieve. So when you actually do your curriculum review and when you design your learning activities, please put that the students in mind. Okay, for them, how are, how are they going to have, what, what kind of activities for them to have 21st century skill, an example. And also, we will want to focus on the empathy. Students, okay, we should design activities that impart empathy. How do you impart empathy in your LMS? Maybe tak pernah terfikir, right? 
So it's time to, to, to think on how to impart empathy and values huh, in the virtual learning environment. Now, although this is the framework for the, uh, the model for the future proof uh, skill set, all the uh, criteria, now we have what we call the value infused future proof talent. Okay? We are actually humanizing the technology. Because just now your colleague said he, technology is just a tool, right? And of course, we need that future ready tech leader also. So um, UMS is having a good uh, future tech leader that actually help in all the uh, delivery and also the uh, design of the uh, e-learning in UMS. So, talent of the future is not just about uh, job seekers, it's about job creators. And we talk about job uh, creators, then we talk about GE, right? Graduate probability. And many, there are many thoughts, uh, many views about, about GE. Um, of course, as parents, uh, after this, your your uh, your child graduate, you want you would want them to work, right? But the question now, you want them to work with uh, other people, to other people, or for other people, or on their own, uh, job creators. And there are many jobs, um, like sixty two percent. Uh, by 2025 20, uh, that will be replaced. People keep saying about being replaced by robot. Those are all the routine repetitive jobs. But we should also take that opportunity. Uh, we look at problems and issues as opportunity on how here as educators that we can actually uh, give them the experience, design it, prepare them for the future. And as and one of the characteristics of 21st century educator as is to be co-creator and also co-learners. We learn actually a lot from our students and we learn together and get them involved, remember? So as again, as a 21st century educator, we would want to work with our students. Okay? Uh, we see learning innovation skills, digital literacy skill, career and life skills. Just now also your colleague mentioned about lifelong learning and how using e-learning can enhance a lifelong learning and professional development. So it has to be flexible, uh, adaptable and agile. I'm sharing with you some of the programs, okay? that has been reviewed, no, this is not reviewed program, has been developed from scratch. These are the nine programs by MTUN. MTUN, actually, uh, the Malaysian Technical University Network. UTEM, UMP, UL, UTHM, and UDMAP. Okay? Now, they work very, very hard. All four of the universities, this group of people, a large group of people, work day and night, duty, public holidays, weekends, workshops, and workshops after workshops, engage with the industry, uh, engage with many, uh, uh, many other agencies, JPK, to come up with these nine programs. These are all uh, 3U1I programs. And these students, they will be graduating with this degree and a Meister certificate from German. And how did that happen? Because they actually make the effort. Now, of course, you see, then maybe you were thinking, oh, uh, JPT is supporting. We see the effort, we support. But you have to initiate. Okay, you have to initiate. And you know, if they need more help with the industries, for example, because after they have they have designed this, they said they want to engage get the uh, get some feedback from the industries, then we help. But at 
uh, even from the first step when they actually design it, they had they get all the industries, for example, to sit down and co-develop the program together. Oil and gas, for example, they had uh, um, in, uh, they had workshops with the oil and gas uh, people uh, from the industry uh, companies. They would sit down and go through all the topics together. It's not easy, I can tell you. Yeah, I was with them even start uh, when it was start, uh, started in December two thousand eighteen, and and because of the mindset of you know um, having normal uh, curriculum review, some of them after they have done it um, halfway that they have to change again because this is actually skill based. Seventy percent of practical, thirty percent um, theory. We have also this, for example, like this this program. They have they call it um, a day release. Three days in the university. Uh, sorry, three days in the industry. Two days in the university, starting from first semester. Transdisciplinary program. Let's say if you work with the industry, how e-learning can help. We can get the industry players, industries, the company owners to actually develop a video so that all the theoretical part can be accessed online. And they go and to the uh, to the factories, to the industries, um, where, during for face to face and hands on uh, practical. Okay. So these are all the transdisciplinary program. If you can see, UITM have a few. Right, and UUM and also uh, UKM. Diploma Industry Technology Hygiene. This one, they are graduating with diploma and a NOSH certificate. Um, sanitary Diploma Technology Tari, uh, working together with Luncai Emas, Emna uh, Series. So these are some of the industry players. Uh, it's very important that you get the in, uh, uh, informed. Uh, the industry also have to be informed that they can uh, uh, have the double tax deduction uh, with when they register with a uh, talent corp, for example, and HRDF, right? QSR is has been very supportive. Uh, with the universities to come up with uh, 3U1I, 2 2 i courses and also now working for micro-credentialing. Right. So based on those mapping just now, that's why we have to transform. Transform means redesign. That's the word, re-imaginering, learning. <laughs> 